What does focus mean? Yeah, what does focus mean? Yeah. Okay. Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. Well, bird flu is back in the news. So in the last uh, 30 days, there have been 49 poultry flocks that have been infected with uh, H5, uh, H5N1. So uh, why is it happening? Well, first of all, let me show you where, where they are. So uh, mostly close to the Canadian border, you can see, and it's uh, both on the East Coast and West Coast and in the middle. <laughs> the reason for that is all these migrating waterfowl. So if you remember, we talked about this before, but there are four major flyways. There's the Pacific Flyway, the Atlantic Flyway, Mississippi, and Central Flyways. And this is where these migratory patterns happen. Uh, and they migrate twice a year. Uh, in the, they go to the north in the spring, and then in the fall they go back to the south. And once if they're infected and they're traveling, this is when you get infections because of the co contact with, with the fowl. So all four major flyways now have infected birds. Uh, the ones that mostly carry it are duck, geese, and swans, shorebirds. Domestic poultry are the most susceptible. So we, we know that there's also been outbreaks in cattle, but the, the domestic poultry are the most susceptible. And it started off in the Atlantic and Pacific, uh, flyways, but it rapidly moved towards the middle. Uh, raptors like hawks and eagles and owls and uh, landfowl are not as uh, susceptible to infection. They can occasionally be infected, and songbirds rarely are. So if you've got bird feeder in the back with cardinals and bluebirds, don't, don't worry about those. Uh, the biggest uh, group has been these uh, blue wing teal ducks. And in Kansas, they've identified 20 of these that were, uh, that were infected. Uh, in Wyoming, they did find some uh, turkey vultures <laughs> that were infected. That's unusual. There was only one each, not a big flock of them. Uh, in Michigan, Canada geese have been infected. Uh, and in Canada, there's 41 different species that have been infected. Uh, interestingly enough, the CDC is no longer uh, keeping tally of this. This has now fallen to the USDA and, of course, with the government shut down, we don't get any information. Just in the middle of a <laughs> bird epidemic, no information. But these are the cattle uh, by state. You know, obviously the outbreaks were really bad in, ca in California, Idaho. We had it in Texas. The good news is that there hasn't been a lot of changes in the number of people. So most of the, you know, as I told you before, 41 of the 70 cases were in dairy herds, 24 in poultry farms. But we haven't had a case uh, reported in quite a while, and, and there is no sense that there's an increased risk, so that's, that's good. Now, there was an interesting study looking at an mRNA vaccine uh, and to, for, for bird flu, and this is really important because we have to be prepared for the a possibility that will eventually mutate and be uh, a potential pandemic. So we need to have vaccines available. Of course, we stopped funding mRNA vaccines, but this was a, this was a paper uh, in Science Translational Medicine that took an mRNA vaccine, and uh, it turns out mice aren't the best animal model for bird flu, but uh, primates are, and so they looked at macaques. They vaccinated to a historical uh, older H5N1 sequence, and it was protective in, the, in macaques. It was protective against the current one that's circulating in, in bovine uh, in, in cattle. So th that's, that shows that if we have vaccines, even to historical sequences, it's likely that they'll be useful for what's circulating now. So uh, it really would be behoove the, the country to be prepared for a potential pandemic by having vaccines against bird flu ready to go. Now, TEFI uh, has been really interesting data. This is the Texas uh, uh, Epidemic Public Health Institute, where we have all these sites, 80% of the state covered uh, in wastewater, and look at what's in viruses that are in there. It, what's really interesting to me is just, you remember, we were talking about the increase in, in uh, SARS-CoV-2. It has really dropped off. So you can see a really dramatic fall in SARS-CoV-2. So we did have kind of an August peak, a little early September. And then it's fallen out now, which is good news. Other respiratory viruses like uh, in, uh, adenovirus, uh, enterovirus D68, is are on the on the rise. This is the season for those, and we continue to have uh, mpox in the water, which I mentioned uh, last week. We talked we talked a lot about it. 
So one of the early, one of the interesting things that's happening worldwide is that there has been a pretty uh, quick surge of influenza in Japan. Now remember, uh, the season for flu is usually November, December, January, but Japan already has an, uh, an epidemic influenza uh, problem. They've had 6,000 cases since October, most and a lot of infecting children. Uh, so this is really interesting. It's, it's a much earlier stage of uh, infection. No one's really exactly sure why. Malaysia has also experienced a very early flu season, and they've had schools closed and 6,000 students infected uh, in Malaysia. So. Why is this happening? I said it's not really clear, but one possibility is after the COVID pandemic, there has been a, a lot of increase in international travel. And so, uh, you know, if you think about international travel, if it comes from the Southern Hemisphere, they're having their flu season. So travel from the Southern Hemisphere, like from Australia, traveling to Japan or Malaysia, that could possibly bring on an earlier, uh, an earlier system uh, infection, but we're not really sure. So one interesting thing is how, how well will the vaccine for flu work this year? One of the ways of looking at it is uh, some, uh, some folks in the scientists in the northern hemisphere look at what's going on in the southern hemisphere. So they're just coming out of their flu season. Uh, and so looking at the effectiveness of the flu vaccine, it was about 50 to 55 percent effective at reducing clinic visits and hospitalizations. You know, we'd like it to be more. Uh, a little bit more efficient, it would be better if it was like 70%. So it's gonna, my guess is it's gonna be about the same. Uh, the main circulating one was H3N2 uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. And so we, we can expect a similar uh, flu season here. Uh, anyway, so uh, one other uh, really interesting th this, uh, paper that uh, around vaccination was uh, the risk of RNA vaccines in, in, uh, in pregnancy. There was a lot of concern about this, and so French researchers did a study looking at first trimester pregnancy, uh, women who got vaccinated, and they wanted to look at whether there any increase in congenital malformations, and they looked at 75 different ones. Of, of 527,000 infants, 24.7% uh, were exposed to mRNA COVID vaccines during the first trimester, and what had happened was actually there was not, not only was there not an increase, but it was less than the control group. So mRNA vaccines provided absolutely no risk. In fact, they were slightly lower uh, than those who didn't receive mRNA vaccines. So that, that was a good uh, study that shows the safety of mRNA vaccines, even in first trimester uh, pregnancy. There's another study uh, in Canada that showed similar data. So I think the issue around, you know, are mRNA vaccines safe, you know, perfectly safe, huge study that showed that. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, and, this is one of my, this is actually a really interesting study that came out in Science Advances. Uh, why do women outlive men? So there, <laughs> there is an old Jewish joke, but why do, why, do, uh, why do Jewish men die before their wives? And the answer is uh, they want to. So, <laughs> so uh, but this is actually a study that shows that women actually live longer than men. And so there's, this is a very large study, and the, the hypothesis is that having two X chromosomes makes the difference. And where, because men have only one X and a Y, there's mutations in the X chromosome that can lead to earlier death. So the interesting thing is they looked at 648 bird species. Why are birds interesting? Because it's the opposite. So in birds, the uh, males live longer, and it seems to be related to the having the, the duplication of the sex chromosome. So that, that, that to me was a really cool study. Anyway, <laughs> I, I don't know why women live longer than men, but they sure do. So I want to end today with some shout outs. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Dr. Uh, Rafael Tamoya, who's been selected as one of the 29 stat wunderkinds from, from 2025. The Stat News organization searches every year for scientists who achieve great success in their careers in health and medicine while still being relatively young. The award recognized the groundbreaking work in academia, industry, and clinics. Dr. Tamoy is a postdoctoral associate in Dr. Indira Mysurakar's lab, where he studies immunologic tolerance mechanisms of pregnancy and how pathogens like Zika and HIV virus exploit those mechanisms to infect the placenta. So he's very interested in maternal and fetal health. So really cool study, and congratulations to him. Big shout out to Dr. Kristen Henley, an assistant professor of pediatrics at Christus Children's Hospital in San Antonio, 
who was named Volunteer of the Year by the Africa Fire Mission. Uh, Dr. Henley was recognized for efforts to reduce deaths in Africa caused by life-threatening bleeding, which led to the launch of an active bleeding control training program. So congratulations to her. And remember, it's time to vote. Uh, remember that early voting for November 4, Texas Constitutional Amendment election started this week and runs through October 31st. There are 17 proposals. I already voted. It took me about a year and a half to get through those 17 proposals. But one of the most important ones is uh, Proposition 14, which proposes to establish the Dementia Prevention Research Institute, DPRIT, very much modeled along CPRIT. Uh, it's really important uh, if you think that doing research in for dementia prevention is important, you should go vote for that. Anyway, uh, those registered and vote, who are registered in Harris County can vote in the Texas Medical Center Commons, as I do. Anyway, have a wonderful weekend, and I can't wait to see you next week. <laughs>